The Dead Pair Podcast is brought to you by Elite Shotgun. They stand behind and you. And fueled by Fioki. Oh. Welcome to the Dead Pair Podcast. Coming in hot with hot. everything you want to hear about sporting clays. Ben Hathaway. Each short and blind person would have to fight 14 kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Anthony on the phone. You're making a big mistake, okay? Yeah. <laughs> We're talking to Gianna Santo tonight. Well, I have something, but I don't know how much everyone's going to like it. I was not ready for that. With your hosts, Jason Rambo. You just didn't want my wife to edit something else you did. And Sean Alley. You gotta keep it PG-13, oh, man. No. Often imitated, but never duplicated. It's the Dead Pair Podcast. The Dead Pair. And now, it's showtime. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back, Mr. Large and in Charge. How are you, my friend? Good, my friend. How about yourself, Jason? How's life down there in Florida? Well, from what you were telling me earlier on the phone today, I'd say it's a lot warmer than where you're at. Well, so, that's that uh, goes without saying. It's all right. Here in a couple months, I'll look like a burnt match, and you'll be in the nice weather. So, <laughs> Yeah, finally. Um, I'm done with this cold rain and sleety crap we're getting right now. Of course, I'll be up there in New Jersey for the World Championships, and i got to go back to the house in Ohio. So I'll, I'll be up there to harass you and tease you and come in studio and get some old-fashioned recording done like we're used to doing. So. Yeah, but by that time, it'll be nice up here, so you're going to miss all the fun yes. stuff. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Sean, did you get the email from QMAX? Yeah, man, that was some awesome news, dude. I mean, they're they're back up and running. I guess they're back up. they got their production rolling, and you guys can buy QMAX again now. Yes, and we're going to have uh, Mr. Dave McCurry come on, um, along with Mr. Paul Hebert of Wicked Tuna. Uh, going to be joining us also is Bobby Mann. Um, we'll, we'll let everybody tell you who they are, but when Sean and I initially recorded this, there was some kind of an audio glitch in like the first five minutes. Uh, wife did everything she could to fix it. Please just bear with us. Uh, we apologize for the first five minutes, but uh, it's never happened before. And knock on wood, it'll never happen again. Gotta but love technology, those... Jason. Gotta love technology. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know it. Trust me. Uh, but no, anyway, uh, awesome, awesome interview. Uh, can't wait for everybody to hear this. They got some exciting things they're talking about, some new things coming up, with uh, even with Wicked Tuna. And you're probably wondering, why is Wicked Tuna on a Sporting Clay podcast? Yeah. Well, listen, and you'll find out why. It's important. You guys are going to want to hear this. <laughs> oh, wait. There's a test at the end. So There is. You know. There'll be a multiple, <laughs> it's multiple choice, though, so there's no pressure. <laughs> oh, thank God. I'm only a C student. I just choose C, C, C. So, anyway... Yeah, I think everybody's going to get a big kick out of this. This is really cool, and I uh, can't wait for everybody to hear it. Also, a little surprise for everybody. On Monday the 15th, that's coming up here this, this coming Monday, on Monday nights, we're going to do it probably like bi-weekly, like twice a month for right now, we're going to have the Dead Pair Scoops. This is going to be live on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and it's going to be live as in interactive, interactive with you, every, all the listeners. You can ask questions, you can make comments, whatever you want to do. Um, it's definitely going to be me, possibly Sean, if he can make it, possibly Chad Roberts, if he can make it. But what we're going to do is report on the news of the weekend. That's going to come right after the Southeast Regional. Now, we're not going to do a bunch of sponsor stuff. We're not going to do a bunch of interviews. This is going to be live interactive. So if you can think of it as like football, it'd be like, armchair quarterback if you think of it as racing it'd be what they call bench racing right this is just a spot where everybody can voice their opinions ask questions um again we're going to cover the highlights from the shoot you know who won maybe like the top five um from the shoot i'm probably going to call up some people that were there and get their opinions on the shoot that kind of thing this is just for fun Okay, that's all this is. It's it's just a fun live thing we're going to do. Probably going to be a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, and it's going to be a way that all of you can interact with us. Yeah, I was going to say, can the can the people that are listening can actually like ask us questions on YouTube while we're live? Yes. Or? Okay. yes. All they got to do is type it in the comments. It'll pop up on the screen. Uh, now, I might save all of that towards the end of the show where I can scroll back through the comments and answer any questions if I can answer them. Um, or if Chad can answer them or whatever. Um, but it's going to be a way that everybody can interact and, and kind of be more, I don't know, the whole live thing is something new, right? So yeah. I want to try it and, uh, 
You know, I know Meathead Radulovich tried it there for a while, but I think I think he kind of lost people a little bit. So we're gonna do something fun. Um, and this the main thing is is news from the weekend. What yeah. happened at the shoot? We're gonna call it the Dead Pair Scoops. It's gonna be Monday nights. Uh, we're gonna do it biweekly for right now. Uh, if it takes off and it gets bigger, I'll start doing it every Monday night. But you got to have something to talk about, right? So Yeah, it should be a baptism by fire, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. There's probably going to be some <laughs> learning involved. Uh, keep in mind, I'm a dozer operator. I mean, I'm not good with electronics. So, uh, you know, if I screw something up, bear with me. So, but right on. We're going right to we're going to give it a try and see what it's all about. See if we uh, see if everybody likes it. So tune in. Monday the 15th will be the first one. We're going to do it 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And the reason why I'm doing it so late Eastern time is so the people on the West Coast can join us. So 8.30 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Not Facebook, not Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, just look for the Dead Pair Podcast on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and get signed up. and You'll get the notification when we go live. Should be fun. The Dead Pair. All right, this is going to be a mouthful, so everybody bear with me here a second. We have none other than Mr. Dave McCurry from QMAX on the phone with us. We also have a very special guest, Mr. Paul Heber, captain of the Wicked Passau from Wicked Tuna, along with Bobby Mann. Bobby, what is your official title? Um, I guess you could just call me um, an entrepreneur. <laughs> That's funny. big daddy big daddy are you, are you the one that ropes and wrangles all these crazy captains in bobby is that what yeah, it is I, well i try my best you know we, we, we work hard a lot of things i have many many um things going on especially with qmax but when i introduced qmax to paul which I don't know if you could find a tougher environment than the, the Northeast Atlantic. And as hard as those guys work up there and beat those boats up and cold and heat and salt. And, and I said, you got to try this stuff because I, I love it. I've loved it for years. And I gave it to Paul and Paul went, you know, you, you can ask him how what he thought. But And then we also sent up some up to um, and had the Harbor Master sprayed his, his brand new motors on his boat and he was flabbergasted and um, we've been having a lot of luck with it in the northeast because there's so much rust and salt up there but enough of me you guys go ahead it's, it's a fantastic product we're going to be working with the military um it's going to be it's going into an, a lot of places here shortly so it's, it's, it's you know god bless dave and paul for all of his his, 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 his testing and, and his opinion is worth worth everything to us because no nobody is in a tougher environment than Paul is day in and day out. So God bless well, you guys. So I'm, I'd like to, I'll listen from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, well, Paul, listen, uh, no pun intended, but are we catching you right in the middle of your fishing season? No, we don't start until, well, we start charter fishing before we start filming. We start tuna fishing in June 1st. That's when the tunas start to okay you know, come around the corner from Cape Cod and they work their way up north. But the best time is August and September and October and November. Those are our, in the, it gets cold, but the tuna are everywhere. The tuna, they like the cold water, the bluefin tuna. It's not like the yellowfin and the albacore, they're in 80 degree water. These tuna that we catch, the filet mignon of the ocean is what it is. It's a, um, the sushi grade is bluefin. That's why we get so much for it. And we catch those in the colder water. So oh, wow. On their way to Canada and we catch them on their way back. So, gotcha. and I'm very fortunate. Like, yeah, all right. So everybody in the world, everyone's grandfather had a can of WD-40 in their tool shed. When I used Humac, for the first time, I, I doused all my rod holders, all my rods, all my reels, everything on my boat, my anchor, my dab and my chain. There's not an ounce of rust on my boat anywhere. And every year, I'll apply that. And they got the wipes too, which makes it really easy for me. And I put it in a spray can. It works good for my tower. And it's all aluminum. 
so, and you know, all the stainless on the rub rails, I have no rust. I'm the only boat in the marina that has no rust on their rub rail because wow. it drips. Yeah, you'll see it because you bump the dock when you're coming in. Everyone does. You can't help it. But you'll bump against a piling, and it'll dent the stainless screw. And we all know now, all stainless rust. And when you bang it, you'll see the rust dripping down the side of the boat, and it gets on the boat. I'm the only one that has no rust drips. That's amazing. You know, since I've started with q yeah. Well, well, Paul, I mean, so, you know, everybody's probably asking, it's like, wait a minute, this is a sporting clays podcast. Why do we got fishing guys on here? Now, <laughs> you, you know, uh, first and foremost, I mean, obviously with Dave on here, we've worked with Dave and we love his product. We will we'll let nothing else touch our guns because we shoot in all elements. We shoot in the rain, we shoot in the snow. So it's very important to uh, to keep that gun rust free. And, uh, and they're expensive guns. And just like your boat, we don't want anything yep. creeping up on there. And this stuff How works. do you guys like it? Oh, we I mean, it's excellent. We won't let anything else touch yeah. our guns. I mean, that's... I like, swear it, by it. It's yeah. fantastic stuff. I mean, so back up a little bit. So can you just give us a little backstory? Exactly when and how were you approached with the QMAX and what made you decide to try it? Well, I knew Bobby. Bobby and I were just starting to get a um, wicked tuna seafood out there. And when we started to talk, he introduced me, I think to David, was it you, David, that I yeah. met Bobby's yeah. office that morning? Yeah. We had a meeting yeah. and we talked about what he had and I tried the product and I immediately gave it to my, my deckhand. I was like, look at I'll try all this stuff. It's for Ross and blah, blah, blah. And he, <laughs> my mate Lance, owns the heavy equipment. He's a farmer. He does all his heavy equipment in QMAC. He used to use that fluid stuff, that fluid film, and now he keeps begging me for more QMAC. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get some more of that stuff? Can you get some? I go, you want to it all? He goes, yeah, dude. I spray everything with that. <laughs> So let's uh, well, hold on a second. So, which one of the two max products are you using? Are you using the salt? I'm using the salt. Yep. Okay. On my and boat. What, on my boat, I you, use that. And you said you were using WD forty before that. When I look, you know, my father always had in the shed. He always had WD forty. My father was a fisherman. My bro, my five older brothers were fishermen. My grandfathers were fishermen. They always used WD forty. And I replaced it with q -Max. Like, you'll never <laughs> see a can of WD-40 in my garage. So the important question is, did you convert them over to it now? I, well, <laughs> my father's not with us, but my brothers have it. And my brother's a fisherman in Maine, and he loves it as well. Nice. Where'd you get this stuff? This stuff's nice. <laughs> Can you get any more? <laughs> yeah. So let, let me ask you this because, I mean, look, you're in probably one of the most corrosive and harsh environments in the world when it comes to metal, right? I mean, yeah. you know, being oh, ocean no spray doubt. and enduring all the salt spray all the time. So what's been the long-term effects of metal that you've coated? I mean, you know, is there something, hey, I forgot to spray that again, and it's still fine? Or, I mean, what can you tell us about long term? This is what I do every year. Like, next month, my boat's out of the water right now. So, next month, I'll apply QMAX. I'll wipe everything down, and it's good all summer long. Nothing will rust on my boat. And yet all the, the tower, I take 10-foot seas over the bow of the boat all the time. And we take them broadside, you know, the water's just, uh, it buries the boat. So when we take waves over the boat, it washes everything off. The QMAX stays. Like if I was to spray it with something else, it would wash off eventually. The QMAX stays there. That's why it's staying on my boat. That's why I have QMAX in my, in my boat. Gotcha. Because that, yeah, I don't have to do it all the time. I apply it once every spring, and it's good all fishing season long. And I fish June, July, August, September, October, and November, and a week in December. Gotcha. Wow. And it's fine. I won't touch that boat until probably May. I'll apply it on in May. I'll wash it, and then I'll apply QMAX, and then it's good till next year. 
So Paul, let me ask you this. So with the way you're using QMAX, obviously your your primary concern is rust prevention. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. But you're also using it on your fishing reels and stuff because it is a lubricant. It is a lubricant. I use it on everything. All my rods, all my reels. I use the wipies for uh, the rod. And it just keeps, it cleans everything. Everything. Even my rub rails, they made out of like the hard plastic, the PVC. It cleans that up as well. All the cleats on my boat, anything that's stainless, I put QMAX on my cleats. Um, my all my rod holders because rod holders fill up with water all the time right. and you'll have the bolt on the bottom and the water will sit in there and drip rust on the deck since i've used q max no kidding aside no rust has been on my deck none that is not awesome. one bit not a drop so that would obviously be your favorite feature of the product then is the is the absolute absolutely no rust. It, it it's a proven thing for me because I don't see any rust. And the best thing, it lasts. It's not like you got to apply it every week. You right. put it on and it lasts. You know, with anything else, you got to apply it all the time. Well, which I find amazing because, I mean, you guys are just out there fishing all the time and, and that boat's got to be getting hammered over and over and hammered. over again with, with salt I water. I mean, waves over the bow all day long. <laughs> uh, you got to remember, it takes us a couple hours to get out there and a lot of times we're pounding right into the sea, you know, you smash into like 15,000 waves just on the way out. Wow. You know, you, know, you, you, you guys got to understand something else about Paul because I've fished with him numerous times and his boat is incredibly beautiful and it's, and it's his, it's his passion and his love and it's, you know, his, his home cause he's in it half the time, you know, you know, yeah. he, he has a beautiful home, but he's in the boat probably more than he's in his home. And, and, and that boat is, a, it's an incredible boat. Okay. And it's pristine. Absolutely and pristine. It's pristine. And he, and Paul is a machine when he fishes and, and maneuvers and, and takes care of that boat. Everything on that boat, every single inch of it is taken care of. And so for this product to impress him like that, I'm telling you, it, it's, it, it's a fantastic story. I'm totally sold on it. I love it. And, and I'm very, I'm a skeptic with anything in life, anything. I got to use it or try it or see it to believe it. And I'm sold 110%. Jason, I'm Go ahead. to interrupt this day from Kimmich. Hey, you know, Jason, Sean, you know what's amazing about Paul? I mean, Paul, Paul's a smart guy, right? So, I mean, he's, he's, you know, grown up on the, on the, you know, on the coast and dealt with boats and all kinds of stuff and some of the farmers and equipment and stuff like that. You know, what's, what's amazing about Paul, Paul actually had an idea that about spraying all, like all the vehicles down, like on the, all like of the, them. On the east of coast, like, yep. like underneath new cars, the vehicle. All like underneath cars. So Paul, Paul's gotten, Paul's getting involved with this as, as, as a partner that like any car that like comes off a new car lot, I mean, you get a car that looks brand new and then at six months, it looks like junk. You can spray cars down and it keeps like, like looking brand new for three or four years. So just like prevent maintenance. And a lot yep. of that came from Paul's idea, you know, because he, he's, he, so he's very smart. You know, he's not only just a, one of the best fishermen in the world, he's, he's very, very smart. You know, you know, maintenance on, maintenance on boats, maintenance on equipment. And he's, and he, and he went to a couple of his friends and said, you know, th this is crazy. This should be on every one of my vehicles, all the stuff. That, every car wash too. Every yeah. car oh, wash. See, see. <laughs> I didn't even, you know, I think going to see he's, he's, he's so, so, you know, think he thinks forward so much. You know, it's like, it should be in every car wash. I, I would never think of that, but up, I'm not from the East. I'm, you know, from being the Midwest boy, he's up East. He's like, you know, he's like, he's talking to people like, Hey, we should be having this in car wash and spraying it, you know? And it's called coming from Paul's ideas. Wow. You know, so, they, they you know, so, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds of salt on the roads up here. And it's the worst for your, for your frame and your truck. In in like two years, if you get a new vehicle in two years, if you don't take care of it, you're going to see rust everywhere in the springs and the shocks and your brake lines and your fuel line clamps and everything. You spray it with this stuff, it's going to prolong the life of your truck. And I know it lasts because I put it through the saltwater test. Yeah. Nice. Well, like I said, the, the environment you're in is 
is about the best test you can ever use. But <laughs> yeah. So I was I was introduced to QMAX in 2019, and since then I haven't used anything but QMAX on my guns. And I use the black and the, and the blue. Um, Paul, have you tried either one of those products? I mean, I know you're using the salt, but have you tried the QMAX blue or QMAX black? I've tried one of them. I tried the salt, and I, what was that other one? I think I used the ones for guns. I yeah, used the, that on my tower. Yeah, I, I think you did my tower with that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, now, okay, now we're going to have some fun here. Do you, you get to get out and shoot and hunt and fish and or not fish, but I mean, obviously you fish, but I'm talking about you get to get out and hunt, bust a few clay birds now and then. Well, I go to the Matt Light celebrity shootout every year yep. in November. Yeah. We all go skeet shooting and uh, we just did that in November. We do that every single year. We help him raise money to take kids hunting and fishing and all that. So yeah, we, we do that every year. We, shoot uh pigeons every year awesome that's so, awesome obviously you got qmax for your guns then right <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, yeah. oh yeah nice. you won't find nice. anything in my in my in my garage for qmax i'll tell you that it's it's that's a cool. wonder it's it's great i can't wait to do my truck well, Paul, I mean, besides the uh, the charity event that you do, I mean, do you actually go out and do any other type of recreational shooting or, or with, with friends? I used to go deer hunting um, back when I was a kid. I, I thought it was a long time ago. It was like in 98, 99. Like back in the day, we used to go to Maine hunting. We used to get a big cabin and go hunting up there. It was fun just to go up with a group of guys and get away from the women and just have a good time with the guys, you know. These are all the mates. We were all mates on boats, and we would all go out and buy a bunch of guns. I had a three fifty seven Dan Wesson interchangeable barrels, and we were, I had a 30-odd six, 12-gauge pump Mossberg, you know. And uh, first gun was a twenty two with a scope <laughs> with a banana clip, 30 bullets. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like typical, uh, yeah, typical country guy stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to take you sported clay shooting, and then you can take us on the boat and catch a fish. Oh, that would be awesome! I would do love you, that. Do you guys bird hunt? Oh yeah, yeah. Used to not on a. I, be, I belong to two clubs. I belong to one of them in Corinne, Utah, called Game Birds Unlimited. Yep. And then I yep. belong to another one in Vermont called Peaceable Hills Farm. And um, I think my record in one day on at, at Game Birds was 86 dozen in one day. Wow. That's a big, that's a big day. <laughs> I, sh- I, sh- I shoot a lot. I shoot a lot in all my guns, all of my shotguns. And, and my, I have a TK 30 out 6 that's beautiful. And um, all my guns. I, I, had, I had a Mossberg that I had in a... a, a, a not really quality case and it was stashed in the back of a storage unit for 13 years. And when I opened it up, it was like just a, a dust ball came out, you know, <laughs> and I'm telling you, <laughs> I took Q max. I sprayed it all over the gun inside and all over it. And I left it overnight and to, to right now, and I've never put it on again. And I, this was a, probably a year ago. And to right now, that gun works better than it ever worked before, even when it was brand new. That's awesome. <laughs> That's well, cool. Dave, my, my next question I got written down here is for you, Dave. Um, you know, we talked about the harsh environment these guys are and everything. This is like optimal testing grounds for you. So or do you think you're going to work with these guys moving forward to like, you know, future product developments and testing, stuff like that? I mean, does that thought cross your mind? Yeah, absolutely. Bobby's Bobby's already a partner in in QMAX and been a great supporter. And obviously, you know, we talked about the first podcast. We talked about going, you know, some of the mistakes I made and stuff like that. And Bobby's come along and, and worked really hard with me over the last couple of years. So he, he's already a partner in the company. And Paul's coming aboard, and and, and just mainly because some of the ideas that he has. So I mean, because I mean, you, can, every, you know, the, the good Lord blesses us. Been which you, you bless you because you brings great people in your life. And secondly, he blesses you because you need great partners because you, you can't move a ship by yourself. 
Right. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll, you know, I'll give you another little I'll give you another little update. Sorry to interrupt you, Dave. But um yeah. on Wednesday, Dave's coming here to Florida and through my through one of my partners, Kevin Harrington, you might know Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. Um and yeah. Paul and, and Paul Hebert. Okay, and, and together they introduced me to uh, General Chip Deal, who was once the commander of McDill, and now he's a big, still a big shot over there. And there's 370,000 veterans in the Tampa area, and they all shop at the um, commissary, you know, at McDill. Uh, so Dave's coming down, and on the third Wednesday, we're getting a tour with the general of McDill, and Dave's going to meet with a few people there and tell them all the benefits that QMAX can help them with because McDill especially is right on the coast and, you know, there a lot of their equipment and stuff takes a beating from the salt. So right. um, it should be a very interesting day. I mean, and, and I think they have a few guns over there. So <laughs> one or two definitely have to get QMAX into the Navy. They can friggin' soak the cannons with it. <laughs> 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 oh, so jason i've done some really stupid things in my life right so i i, I do it but i'm not stupid enough not to have paul and, and, and bobby as partners because i mean where else can you go have fun and go fishing and we all have a good time and do a lot of charity and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so absolutely. So that answers your question. So yes, we're all, we're all putting a partnership together and growing the company together. That well, awesome. I'll tell you what, why, why you're down here, we'll go to Vero beach and go bust some birds. So, uh, but sounds- we, uh, listen, a couple of things about Vero beach. First of all, is that it's um, Fells Mary headquarters, bass, the, the 10,000 acre bass over there is awesome. I may even be fishing there Monday, Tuesday on Vero beach. Um, we fish over there all the time. Do you know that spot? Do you know the headwaters? Uh, yeah, I know where it's at, yeah, but I haven't fished it. It's, un- it's unbelievable, okay? If you like the bass fish, it's unbelievable. And then we also go right down to um, to Sebastian Inlet, and we, and we catch a lot of big fish down there, too. Big snook, big trout, big reds. Um, but, you know, we, we cruise over there quite a bit. Well, it just so happens that Vero Beach Clay Shooting Sports is a sponsor of this program. So if we if we need to get some VIP access into Vero Beach clay shooting, go bust some birds. We can do that. So be wonderful. I'd love to do that, Sean. It's okay. You stay up there in Ohio in the cold weather. I'll, I'm going to yeah, go gonna say, I, down with these guys. I, I, I didn't I didn't get the invite, but you know it's a little bit <laughs> a little bit of a drive for me up here in Columbus to go down there to Vero Beach. So uh, you'll have to give me some heads up on that. <laughs> you know, hey Bobby. You know the other thing, but we were we were talking earlier. That we're we're going to set up a special promo. I mean, I'm really, 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 really high. And, and Paul, obviously, I, we have you on the phone, which is a huge, huge, huge honor to have you. You know who you are and what you've done for just so many people throughout the world. You know, 190 countries or whatever. So it's an honor. But 172, yeah. yeah, 172 countries, whatever. But you know, I just want to let you know that from Q. Actually, actually, I think they're at 200 right now, Paul. Yeah, they did go up. We did get the email that they had yeah. to. Country. Yeah. Well, one one thing that you guys as partners with Bobby and Paul, as you know, I I told I was talking to Sean and and, and Jason earlier. We're going to set up a special promo for these guys that they can buy Cumex, and we're gonna we're gonna help them help fund some of their show. So I mean, because they've been a great supporter, and and they and first of all, Cumex is the right thing to put on guns. I mean, to put oil on a gun is the worst disaster to put on a gun. Right. But we're we're gonna help we're gonna help fund these guys and, and, and sell the product at a huge discount to them and and help. Them I think that there's you know, you know what, what 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 is that? There's I think there's what forty one. I might be wrong, but I think there's forty one million wing shooters in the United States. Forty. Yeah. Wow. That's a big I wouldn't doubt it. Anytime you have a, a t- over twenty million in a demographic, and you're trying to sell a product, and you have over twenty, if you have twenty or above, you, it, and you can reach them. It, it, it's it's a home run to have well, that many people that would be amazed by this product is, is is incredible let me help you out a little bit so we just had our last episode uh the national shooting sports foundation we had the president and ceo on and they do a survey every two years and uh they just got the results back from their 2022 survey and 24 million people a year shoot a clay target 
Okay. 24 million people a year. So wow. if we can, you know, have a promo through the dead pair podcast where people can save a little bit on ordering some Q max and we can help some people out and get this, get this awesome product on their guns too. And they can see why we love it so much. Then, you know, that's awesome. And I, I think Sean and I are very humbled and very honored that, that Dave asked us to do this and we we're ecstatic. Uh, we cannot wait. Heck yeah. So yeah, Dave, you kind of took away my, my big news for everybody, but that's all right. I mean, it's well, awesome coming from you. <laughs> Well, I think I well, I think I well, first of all, I think it's the right thing because you guys do a great you guys do a great great promotion for all the all the people that are in that sport, you know, and and we we want to give back to you because we want to keep you guys alive. It's you know because everybody has to make money, everybody has to survive. So if 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 our team, both Paul, myself, and Bobby, can help support your your group and your you know your two initiative, because it's hard. I mean, it's hard. You know, there's a lot of podcasts and a lot of people out there that say they want to do a good job, but you guys have proved yourself. I mean, how, what, how many episodes now have you guys done? Uh, this will be 160. This will be episode 164. Wow. That's 164 so. episodes. That's amazing. You know, that's cool. it, Great. You know, it, that's, a, that's amazing. Plus to get the president of them on the, on the phone and, you know, and, and Paul and everybody else at all the other group. And Hey, hey you know, Bobby, you know, it's funny. And, and Paul, he was, he was tell, telling me that just earlier, he said he had Guy Ferretti on. And yeah. Guy Freddy, you know, was was on the when it was on their podcast, and he's Guy Freddy's a big gun guy, and you know, and he lives out in California, and every he's they set up a big five stand out there, and Guy's a big supporter, so, um, and obviously, you know, you know, we I, the gun guys got to stick together, you know, so yeah. and it's nice that we know that because we can help support Guy, you know, so it goes uh, together it, the hunting and the fishing, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, it does. That's you know, who watches our show with the hunters and the fishermen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The next, the next time, the next time, Paul, um, if we when we do this, which we would be honored to do, and you know, God bless you guys for everything you're doing, and um, um, we should have Jimmy Houston come on to. Uh, well, I'll call Jimmy and have him come on. It would be nice to have Paul and Jimmy have a little conversation. That would be. I think people would enjoy that. That, that would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Complete open mic for you guys. If you want to make that happen, complete open mic for you. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely make that happen. Yeah. Jimmy, Jim, you know, I'm telling you, well, everyone loves Bobby. Bobby's the most, you know, uh, you know, honorable guy. Well, first of all, Paul's not, Paul has a million people coming to him, you know, all over the world and Paul's best friends with Bobby. So that says what it is, you know, you know, good, good Christian people all hang out together and work together. I mean, and, and Bobby, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something funny, Dave, right? Yeah, go ahead. I, I said to Paul today, I said, I said, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. <laughs> he yeah. goes, no, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I love you, Max. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, nice. Paul, thank you. Thank you very much. But I, You're I just, very like, welcome. Absolutely. Well, and you, you know, hey, hey, one thing with it, let's is we're talking on the phone. One thing, one thing, Paul's doing, you know, um, Sean and, and Jason, he, he's out, he's going on a road show. Bobby touched base on that. They're they're, they're coming out with uh, a brand new product that's that Paul put together. Hey, Paul, why don't you touch base on it real quick? Because you know what, there's so many million people have touched base on that. Why don't you talk about the new product that you're launching throughout the world with the, well, with Bobby and stuff with the food. We got the wicked tuna food going in. How many stores are we starting with, Bobby? Bobby must have the numbers right there. Okay, so right now we are in 90 of the military bases, the commissaries, and we're now going into um, all 282 in the United States and a few, a few in 17 other countries. Um, we'll be launching on QVC with Wicked Tuna Seafood in about three weeks. Wow. We, we did a Sam's Club launch in Bentonville, Arkansas three weeks ago. And now our next Sam's Club is May 3rd, 4th, and 5th here in Tampa. And the one after that will be in Boston at Sam's Club. And then we will eventually roll out into all the Sam's Clubs on the coasts, on the north, west coast and east coast. And then we're um, in the process of um, putting our catfish into all the Walmarts. And we start at Fort Bragg on April 24th. 
and we do 17 road shows between Fort Bragg and Hialeah, Florida, over 31 days. Wow. And that also includes, and that includes, now I understand, Bobby, that includes Paul put, introduced all the tuna and stuff onto the right. I mean, they're bringing all that premium food into Walmart and Sam's, correct? All the, the high it's, 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 it's been in, it's been in the military bases since December. And like I said, we're just launching now store after store in, in Sam's and then the QBC will be um, in three weeks. That'll be, then we'll be on there a lot. I've been working with QBC for 30 years um, and home shopping network. Yeah. Our building is, is right by home shopping here in, in the Clearwater area. But anyways, um, yeah, it's exciting. And then we have a lot of hard goods, um, with wicked tuna that we're working on. Um, but right now we're just focused on getting all the food placed and you know, that's incredible. A new company. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. Congratulations on that. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So, they, well, so they've got, they've got the so much. Thing, actually, actually the whole thing from the beginning was Paul's idea. And then, Paul met, but then Paul met, Paul met Kevin Harrington um, they went to a hockey game. They went to a hockey game together. I think, right, Paul? Yeah, we had a we had a we had a lunch. Um, I met with Kevin because I had this big idea. Like I figured we had more than what we were doing, and just selling shirts and hats and sweatshirts. So I brought this idea to Kevin. We had a lunch, and then we went to the uh, Bruins were playing um, the Lightning. And we went to that game. That was awesome. And then I met Bobby, and then we here we are now, two years later, starting to happen. Wow! But think about how tough it is to build a brand, right? Oh, it's because so you, because so many restaurants. I mean, like so many stores have bad brands of cheap products, and and their 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 market was guys is just like you guys. They want to have a premium product, Jason and Sean, and they, and they're they're bringing premium products into Walmart, Sam's, all these guys that people can get first class. I mean, seafood is coming from the East coast. Yeah. We're yeah. catching the fish, bringing yes, it into summer. the place. They, they loin it all up. They cut it all. They package it and then they ship it to the stores. It's not out there like on a big ship and stuff. Right. It, that they bring it in, sell it. They bring it to, uh, to the place where they process it, cut it and ship it out. That's incredible. Yep, from, from the ocean to your plate in like two to three days. Wow! And it start and it started with Paul. I mean, it started with Paul's idea out of Wicked Tuna, and he's got a and he's and he started a national brand launch that's going in all those countries, all those people from his idea. That is so Isn't cool. Incredible. That is very cool. A lot of hard work, a lot of good people, and Kevin Harrington is one of the most wonderful people in the world. He's been my friend for forty years. And I love him dearly, and just a lot of brilliance around. Our whole team is really bright. You guys, you guys should check out who Kevin Harrington is. Kevin's a, was a, one of the very first original guys on on that show. So yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know who, I, I I know of him. Obviously, I don't know him, but yes, I know who you're talking about. He was the one that started the infomercial. He invented the American infomercial. It's it's Mr. Wonderful, right? No, no, that's not Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. Okay. Sorry. It's been a hot minute since I Kevin, watched that. Kevin Harrington's the handsome one. <laughs> <laughs> with, with hair. Yeah. Yeah. With, with hair. hair. Yeah. He's the handsome guy with hair. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Larry's a smart guy, too, though. Kevin no, Larry. I, Kevin Larry's a wonderful guy. He's a really Very good guy. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, too bad. Too bad we didn't have a bunch of bush lights right now. We could all sit around and talk about all this stuff. You know, it's just it's. You know, <laughs> I'd have to have I'd have to have iced tea. I haven't had a drink in twelve months. Corona. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're bush light fans, so we we want to you know. We just God bless. I'll we'll have a good yeah. time. So yeah, so we'll do it. But go ahead. You got tell all you got all your shooters out there, all your all your hunters and you know bird hunters. If they want to go tuna fishing, get a hold of me on my website, wickedpissofishing.com. They can uh, get a hold of me. There's a number on there. They can call, talk to me and everything. So, Well, we're, wow. we're doing a trade, Paul. We're, I'm, we're Sean and I are going to take you sporting clay shooting, and you're going to take us tuna fishing. You okay. will love it, huh, Bobby? Yeah, I got to tell <laughs> one story, okay? okay. So <laughs> the greatest thing about Paul's boat is that 
It's like being in your living room when you're going out to sea, right? <laughs> so I would stay, I would stay in the hotel by the boat. Then we, I go, what time are we leaving? He goes, I was figuring he's going to say six in the morning. He says 2 a.m. I go, what? <laughs> so I roll out of my bed. I run down the stairs. I, I get in the boat, go downstairs in the boat, and there's two big double beds, and I go to sleep. <laughs> he brings his own <laughs> pillow from the hotel. <laughs> Oh. I said, wait, wait, wait me when you got one on. So, Paul motors out, catches a bunch of bait. We go out. This is the this this is what blew my mind. So we hook up, and he's using these big, beautiful mac. He handpicks everyone when he just a leader, the leader on this line. He hooks to the boat's what forty foot tall, forty something feet. 40 feet, yeah. 40 feet. He goes to the very inside, through the cabin, to the very front of the boat. He has a circle a circle thing there, and he hooks the hook on the leader on there, and he pulls it all the way to the other end of the boat, to the other end. And then he takes a, a, a cloth with alcohol on it, a special alcohol, and he cleans the whole thing so there's not one fingerprint on that line, okay? He looks at the whole thing so it's perfect. Then he puts the hook on the end, then he ties it to the the bigger line, okay? Then he picks the best bait. He's like a machine. He's like, it's it's so precise. It's incredible to watch. And he hooks up the best bait, and he drops that in. And we, then you, when, when we hook up, and I said to him, the, the reel's going, Z -Z -Z -Z. I think and we hooked I, a couple that day, right? Oh, we hooked, we hooked three. We hooked at least three. But there's a boat, there's a boat about maybe five or six or 700 yards away from us, okay? And this reel is just burning, right? And I looked at him and I said, you know, you know what's going on? He goes, Bobby, he goes, you see that boat? And I go, yeah. He goes, that fish has already passed that boat, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, it eats, when it eats the bait in one minute, that fish is what, Paul, a mile away from the boat? I, at least a half a mile away. From the boat. Jeez. In one minute. Yeah. And now you've got to start trying to reel that Volkswagen in, okay? <laughs> and he's, he's not happy, and he starts to pull that giant boat backwards. Yeah. Um, and you go, oh, my God. This, I don't think you could. I'm a fisherman. I fish everywhere all the time. It's the most extreme thing I've ever seen, ever. And, and it's incredible. And, he, and to be that good at it. Is a, it's an art. It's a true art, you know. And you got to have the passion in your heart to, to even want to be out there in that brutal weather all the time. But then again, I also love the ocean. I can understand how you love it, you know. You get beautiful days as well, you know. Oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah. August, September, October, you get gorgeous, gorgeous flat calm days. Yeah. It's so nice. You guys need to go. You guys need to go. You need to book a charter with them, and you need to go because I'm telling you, it's a, 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 it's a bucket list trip, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. The later in the year, the bigger the fish get because they're coming down from Canada. Really? Oh, yeah. Awesome. We get them on their way in June and July, and then when they get up to Canada, they come back. They eat up there for a month or two, and then we get them in October and November. Wow. Well, you yeah, know, I, I imagine a, the seas are nice and calm in, in October, November. <laughs> <out there. laughs> yeah. well, it's not bad. It, 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 the boat is so big, you don't even know. It's, it's, it, 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 the boat is so comfortable, even if it's rough, it, it doesn't bother. You don't it. even know it because it's, yeah. it's a big, wide boat. It's 15 feet wide and wow, it weighs nice. 41,000 pounds. That's a My that's boat. a that's that that's a little bigger than a dinghy, I think. That's that's a big yeah, one. Yeah, it's a so. it, it's a very <laughs> comfortable. It's like standing in your living room. <laughs> you know, Sean, it just occurred to me. I'm a dealer for Atlas Traps, and they make a marine grade clay target thrower. We can mount on his I boat. I see where you're going with this. I see yeah. where you're going with this. We're, we'll get this man into shooting one way or another. We're going to get him into sporting clays, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, well, the fish aren't biting, he can grab the shotgun. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, that's great. We can shoot all the way out and all the way in. Yeah, we've had some. Uh, <laughs> we, we've had some very high end clients at Atlas Traps, and it required the the development and the building of a marine grade trap thrower that can be put on a yacht and handle salt spray all day long so 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. So we're gonna have to get you a trap to put on the front of your boat, and when you when you when you're not biting, that. when they're not biting, we're shooting. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of yelling hooked up, we can yell pull. That's right. There you go. There you go. I like it. And the first annual cast and blast bluefin tuna. <laughs> oh, sign me up. Sign yeah. me up. That's great. Well, well, all I think, well, I think bluefin all I think, blowout. All would be funny is when those guys start, you know, they all know who you are right out in the middle of the ocean. And all the guys encroach on you, and then you could then you can start your tournament when you're shooting off the bow of the boat, and it, it all run from you. <laughs> <laughs> I get to pick any spot I want if they all get out of play. I just I'd... get all the room you need. <laughs> That's great. You got to have your atlas trap, atlas trap in your front of your boat. That yep. is so that is actually that is actually funny. No. That's yeah. sweet. <laughs> well, we'll make it happen, Paul. If you're if you're down, we'll make it happen. So I'm down. I'm always down. <laughs> well, oh, guys, it's, this has been I a, mean, this has been a hoot, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Paul, uh, Bobby, Dave, we are extremely honored to have all of you on. Um, very humbled. Dave, by the offer you made to us, and of course we we're going to do everything we can to help you um, promote your product as much as possible because it's something that we love and believe in, and that's something that Sean and I have always stood for on this podcast is we use the products you know that we push and we believe in them, and you know QMax is something that's been on my gun since nineteen, and you know you've never given me a penny, Dave. I mean uh, we just believe in it, so. For this opportunity, we thank you, and we thank you all. Paul, Bobby, I know you guys are, I know how busy you guys are, so we appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. We really do. You're very well. Yeah, super nice to meet you guys. You're very yeah. welcome. I look forward to meeting you in person, and if you want to go fishing, we fish over here. And Once again, you need to go up and go fishing with Paul. Yeah, and listen, yeah, that's I was awesome, guys. I was serious about my invite. If you guys want to go shooting, let me know. Just get a hold of either one of us, and uh, we'd, we'd love to take you all. Heck yeah. Fantastic. Heck yeah. I drive, I'll drive over to Vero Beach to go shoot, no problem. There you go. Just you, you got my number. You know how to get a hold of me. I actually I actually shot in um, Port Charlotte um, two weeks ago. It was fun. I, I, I shot well, too. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Appreciate Thanks, you. Guys. God bless Q Max. God bless Paul, yep. Captain Paul Hebert and Dave McCready. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. See you guys. Bye-bye. See ya. Well, Jason Rambo, I tell you what, that was a fun podcast, man. I mean, who would have known the guys from Wicked Tuna had something in common with us? Yeah. Well, not only that, but hey, listen, I I meant every word of it. I'm going to take him shooting, or we're going to take him shooting, and I'm sure I'm not going to be able to go tuna fishing without you, Sean Alley. Well, I I would love to be invited to that. I'm not living down in Florida like you are, but I can I can hop on a plane, and I can get there soon enough as long as I got enough notice, so... We'll make it happen. But yeah, man, that, I mean, that was just awesome. I mean, I would have never thought that that, that oil would hold up to the salt spray. I mean, those boats get pounded day in and day out. And I mean, that's like one of the worst environments you can put something in. And for those guys to be that impressed with it, and it, it, that's a pure testament to, uh, to Dave and his product. Well, you know, the, the salt that they're using, it, it, it's called salt. It's the spray can. Um, Obviously, we don't use that on our guns because we, you know, you and I, Sean, we use the Q-Max Black and the Q-Max Blue. But I've got some experimenting I'm going to do. There's a little tiny bit of rust underneath my buggy. I'm going to spray it, uh, spray the frame on my truck a little bit here and there, just experiment with it. But I guarantee if it's as half as good as all the rest of the Q-Max products that we use, it's going to work good. Well, there ain't no way we're putting any of our equipment, gear, trucks, cars, or whatever through the abuse that something that goes on the ocean daily right i mean there's there's no way no way so if it holds up that well i would i would think it's going to exceed at whatever we put it oh so absolutely i mean that's the like listen when it comes to to steel that is the worst environment known to man i mean it's right it's salt spray to an extreme so yep um but i mean it's it's a it's an awesome product i mean look you know how much i touted it sean i finally got you tied into it well, hell, it was a year. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah. Proof's in the pudding, man. I mean, that stuff works better than anything I've ever tried before. Yeah, I mean, I think you started using it like a year before we ever had Dave on. Uh, right. And you, you that's you, all you have used exclusively, correct? 
That's right. That the Kohler's never had anything else on it but that. Well, I mean, this goes back to your DT11 days. Oh yeah, it goes back to the DT11. That's sure. But I'm just saying, ever since I got my Kohler, that's the only oil that's been on it. Yeah, I've never had a one bit of problem. And what I like to do, and uh, you you know how bad wide fouling can be on the chokes. Yep. So when I'm cleaning my gun, I'll take the chokes out, and I've got like this little. It's a little tiny Tupperware container. I'll put both the chokes in that, and there's a whole bunch of Qmax in there, and they just soak in there. Time mm-hmm. I get done cleaning my gun and I go back, you can actually see the wad fouling peeling. It looks like an orange peel inside of the chokes. And then you just That's cool. Yeah, you just hit it with a with a brass brush, it all comes right out nice and clean, nice and smooth. And Huh, I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna set myself up a little uh, pint jar, mason jar of that in it and put it put it in there to soak. Yeah. Sounds like it would save some time. But yeah, no, it's awesome. I love that stuff. I mean, you know, with the porting and stuff we have, we get a lot of blast and residue from the gunpowder and stuff. And you know, you can just take your finger, that stuff just flakes right off. Yep. That Q Max doesn't let it stick real hard. Exactly. Well, hey, listen, um, thank you very much to Dave McCurry, Paul Hebert, and Mr. Bobby Mann for coming on. We really appreciate them. Um Sean, one one little quick tidbit before we get out of here. Uh, we, we've gotten a couple of, we, well, first of all, we had a ton of response from the episode where we had Mark Baltazar on uh, speaking about the new NSEA rules and the rule changes and all that stuff. And we've, oh, yeah. we've gotten just absolutely awesome response, you know, ideas and comments and everything. But we have had two negative letters. In both the negative letters, the people were coming down on us for the new rule changes, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> we are not the yeah. NSCA guys. I mean, let's let's no. make that clear right now. Uh, we do not have a clear channel to the NSCA. Um, what we what we are is delegates, and sh- and that's a listen. It's a non paid position, <laughs> and Sean and I right. get to vote on some things. If you're in the state of Ohio, you can write to us. We are the delegates for the NSCA. And we'll be more than happy to get that information along. But I think more importantly, you need to write to the NSCA directly. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, you think it's BS, you think it's awesome, whatever, let them know. Because, you know, even if you don't want to get involved, it's okay to write them a quick email and give them your two cents on it because they need to know. I mean, you're the shooter, you're the competitor, they're trying to change the rules to benefit you. And if you think it's going to benefit you in a negative light, you need to get a hold of them. Yeah, they must be... uh... They must be overestimating the power of the Dead Pair podcast, Jason. Oh, my That's goodness. all it is. We have no power, people. <laughs> we have two microphones. That's it. That's, That's right. That's right. But no, anyway. Um, Sean Alley, what do we tell everybody every week? Well, we tell everybody that if you love the game and you want to watch it grow, we need more people shooting it. Uh, so that means on your end, take somebody out new shooting. Take a person that's never been to a tournament. Take a person that's never been to a fun shoot or a corporate event. Put a gun in their hand, let them break some clays, watch that smile happen, and you know what? They're going to be ready to rock and roll, and you'll be, they'll be in the mix with the rest of us sooner than later. So uh, just no excuses. Just get out there, make five minutes, make a phone call, invite somebody, take them out, have a good time, and you know what? Watch what happens. I'm telling you, it's the only way we're going to grow this sport and continue to grow it. That's right, and don't forget the Dead Pair Challenge, one new person a month. Listen, go back and listen to the last episode with Joe Bartosi. 24 million people a year break a clay target. Why not get them into... A registered shoot. Let's get these tournaments growing. You know, let's let's get the participation in sporting clays growing. That's what this podcast is all about. So, it, absolutely, it takes everybody, right? It takes a. What do absolutely. they say? They Sean takes a takes a village. So, yep, takes a village. Yes, it's a sporting clays. And you village. and I are the village idiots, but you know, that's all right. <laughs> I'm the jester, and you're the I don't know something. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, comic relief. Comic relief. <laughs> I like it, Sean. I like it. Well, hey, Sean, this has been a lot of fun. It's been a long episode. It's been a great episode. Uh, Really cool to have some star power on here. Uh, Not for us, but for the sport. I think it's awesome. And we are going to to take those guys shooting. We are going to introduce new people to the sport, no matter who they are. So, yeah. Sean Alley, until next week, my friend. We can't wait to see you all back here on the Dead Pair Podcast. We'll see you next time on the Dead Pair Podcast. The Dead Pair Podcast is brought to you by Elite Shotguns and Vero Beach Clay Shooting Sports and is fueled by Fioki USA. The Dead Pair theme song was written, arranged, and produced by Toby Tomplay. Big thanks to the following sponsors. RE Ranger, Odo Pro Technologies, Rhino Chokes, Don Grant, Score Chaser, Taconic Distillery, and Atlas Trap Company. <laughs>